A few things before we start. First, there is subscribe to my new film channel. Link will be in the description. Watch the latest episode of the Hoopscast. That link will be in the description. And also, if you enjoy this video, there are many more like it that are already on the channel with many more like it to come into the future. So if you enjoy, subscribe and also please drop a like on the video. Also, I asked in the last video if you are in the Raleigh area, I am starting a local rec league team so if you have any interest in playing on that uh email me at jacobk2313 at gmail.com and send a scouting report of yourself and some footage if you have it today's video is titled three future stars that you've never heard of and well you've probably heard of two of them if not all three of them but while you may have heard these guys' names a few times you don't often hear their names mentioned in the conversation of future star players so it's in the right ballpark i guess I suppose you could say this is a video about players with slept on potential. Now I could start with some bullshit cliche intro like stars, you've heard of them, but here are some more you haven't heard of, or whatever the fuck. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm just going to put my disclaimer for what I believe a star player to be, because that can be a little hazy to people. I consider a star player to be someone who at the very least can be the third best player on a championship level team. Some teams don't have those kinds of guys, but for those that do, it's it would be a player like that. The player I knew immediately that I would open this video with when I came up with the idea is Malik Beasley. Like the guy who is third on this list, based off of a deadline move, Beasley has finally been able to really showcase his star potential. He's been making some big strides and he's come closer and closer to becoming a household name. Beasley, before being traded to the Timberwolves, had a very good year in the 2018-19 season, shooting 40% from three on five attempts, averaging 11 points in 23 minutes a game. He was a big part of of that incredibly deep Nuggets team. But then, after declining an extension that would have paid him nine to 10 million a year for three years, the Nuggets, deciding to be petty, cut down his minutes and thus his production and numbers went down a lot, but then they finally traded him to Minnesota. And since then, Beasley has averaged 21 points and five rebounds, shooting 48% from the field, and an absolutely insane 44% from three on nine attempts per game in 11 games. 44% percent from downtown on nine attempts a game is insane. If he keeps that up, he will probably be one of the five best shooters in the NBA. These shooting splits are very similar to the shooting numbers that Buddy Heald put up last year, which made me declare him as the third best shooter in the NBA behind the Splash Brothers. So it looks like Beasley has finally reached some of that star potential that he has showcased in the past with the Nuggets. It's only a matter of can he keep this up? What I do want to say is that this deadline was fantastic for the Timberwolves because this deadline really made me realize how poor the shooting on the Timberwolves really was because going from Wiggins, Culver, and Akogi in the starting lineup to D'Lo and Beasley has made that look night and day. This much shooting around the superstar talent that is Carl Anthony Towns is a good foundation for a great offense and I think could be the foundation of a playoff team. Add some solid players and defenders in the offseason and I would not be surprised if the Wolves pushed for a playoff spot. I think Beasley's shooting, surprisingly developed ball handling, athleticism, and decent finishing will allow him to be a very efficient third option for a good team. I also want to say shout out to Malik Beasley for betting on himself. He was offered $27 million off of his rookie contract, said fuck that, got nearly sabotaged by his own team, but ended up in a situation where he can live up to his full potential, and he's about to get handed at minimum a $100 million deal over five years. The guy is averaging 21 points at age 23 coming off of his rookie deal. I guarantee you he makes $20 million a year minimum. Next is someone who I haven't been able to talk about in a while, despite me constantly searching for an opportunity to do so. That player is Landry Shamit. Now, two years ago before the 2017 draft, I made a video on the most underrated draft prospect of that class, which I said was Shamit, who ended up making the all-rookie second team after being drafted in the 20s, though I can't brag too much about that video because in that same video, I also said this. And this is going to be a controversial statement, but I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up being better than Trey Young. 
However, I also mentioned in this video that Shamit was more than just a three-point shooter, which is what he's been utilized as thus far, which is a big deal because he's a damn good three-point shooter already. In college, Shamit was a point guard. He was the main ball handler. He averaged five assists per game in his third year. He had a good floater game, could dribble well, and he has that jumper. So I think there is a world where he averages between 17 to even 20 points per game, as well as five to seven assists in the right situation situation that would allow him to do that, that is. Because the Clippers have so many creators and established players that there is little reason to try and run the offense through Shamit, but I think if he finds himself on a team that allows it, Shamit I think could find himself on a level similar to Buddy Heald, where he doesn't create his own shot as much, but he is a better playmaker. Two Buddy Heald comparisons, back to back. I don't know why, but here we are. Okay, now we're going to be talking about the player that is the reason that this video exists. This whole video is just a thinly veiled attempt for me to talk about Christian Wood, because my prediction of Christian Wood is going to be what rides me into the sports hot take hall of fame for being correct rather than being incredibly wrong, because I'm already in there for that, because I did say that both Trey and Luca would be busts, and they both ended up being all-star starters by their second season. So I really need this one to rebound from that. Christian Wood is a name you probably have not heard until recently, although I would like to point out that I was on this train a while ago, well before this recent streak that he has been on. Yeah, now we have the Detroit Pistons, underrated. I'm gonna go Christian Wood. Ooh, uh, Ooh hell is that? <laughs> He had a really good cut. He had a really, really good couple of games with the Pelicans last year. If you're looking for more takes that age extraordinarily well, such as the Memphis Grizzlies being a playoff level team, if John ja Morant had a great rookie year, which I said on that podcast, then go subscribe to the Hoopscast channel on YouTube. It's also going to be on Spotify and other platforms in the near future. If you're even oblivious to the recent streak that Christian Wood has been on, then allow me to tell you about it. Ever since Andre Drummond has been traded, the Pistons have been starting Wood and playing him over 30 minutes for the first time in his career, while consistently running the offense through him. And with that change, in the 11 games that he has played under these new circumstances, Wood has been averaging 21 points, 10 rebounds, a block, and 2 assists, shooting 54% from the field and 44% from 3 on 4 attempts per game. The best of those games coming on this Wednesday, where Wood had 29 points and 9 rebounds, going 12 for 16 from the field, which is 75 percent shooting, going five for six from three in the process with two of those threes having a high degree of difficulty. Wood is the silhouette in this thumbnail that obviously says the next Anthony Davis, and that is mildly clickbait. Because that comparison only slightly applies, though the similarities are definitely there. They're both fours with long arms and a similar offensive skill set. Both are great in the pick and roll and down low. Wood shoots 78% at the basket. Where they differ is, well, one, Anthony Davis is a lot better than Christian Wood and probably always will be. And two, Davis leans more on the side of being physically dominant with his skill, while Wood is way more about finesse while still having some ability to be physically dominant. Wood is a fantastic ball handler for a big man. It makes his face-up game deadly. He's also prone to make smart, tricky dribble moves down low to free up some space for him. And of course, Wood has shown the ability to stretch the floor in a way that Davis never has before. Specifically talking about the three-point shot, because Davis has a far superior mid-range game, Davis is seriously not given enough credit for his mid-range game. For Wood, he only shoots around 22% of his shots from the mid-range, and he shoots around 40% from there, which isn't really good nor bad, while Davis gets 34% of his offense from mid-range while shooting in the lower to mid-40s. What is perhaps most intriguing about Christian Wood is his three ball. As I said, he's shooting 44% on four attempts during the streak that he's been on, but that is a small sample size of only 11 games, so it makes sense to take it with a grain of salt. However, for the season, he shoots 39% from three on 2.2 attempts, which yes, is still a limited sample size. However, we only have limited sample sizes with Wood because he's only played in 1,700 minutes thus far in his career with varying different roles. But when you look at the physical tools that Wood has matched with his great offensive skill set, it's harder to say that Wood won't be a future star rather than to say that he will be. Because 
he checks every single box required to be a great offensive big man in 2020. I wouldn't even be that surprised if Wood ended up being a borderline superstar player in the future. But as for some of his problems, he isn't anything special defensively or rebounding wise. He's not bad in either of those areas, but he also doesn't stand out. And while he does have a lot of length and athleticism, he is only six foot nine and about 210 pounds, which is a bit undersized for a center, which forces him to play power forward for the most part. He has the same issue that John Collins has where he isn't the modern idea of a power forward, which means he basically isn't a big small forward and he is a bit too small to consistently play center. I did say he has the skill set of a great modern big man, but I say that because he has the skill set of a great modern day center because that's really the only kind of big men that we have left. Power forwards aren't really big men anymore, in case you hadn't noticed. But he might be too small to play center, which is unfortunate. His length might make up for it, and if he put on some extra weight and got to around, let's say, 235 pounds, he'll probably be passable, but it is still an area of concern. But Christian Wood is going to be a star. The first two guys in this video, I have some hesitancy saying that. Christian Wood, I'm damn near certain. And it's insane that five teams now have signed him with four letting him go. So don't make that same mistake, Detroit. I don't think that they would, being that they traded Andre Drummond for him. However, sometimes the Pistons are gonna Piston. But that's the end of this video. Check out all those things that I mentioned in the intro. Uh, like and subscribe for more NBA content like this. And cue the outro music.